to Beyond the Veil Tarot and Astrology. My name is Candice Marie. Thank you for joining me. I will be your astrologer today. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm going to tell you guys, I almost gave up on um, horoscopes and I almost gave up on making this video because mm, Mercury retrograde. I feel like I started this video two or three times. One, I couldn't get my keynote to record. Two, I remembered I didn't turn my mic on. <clears throat> um, hold on a second. Mm. Okay, but I'm back um, after years of writing horoscopes and not putting them on my YouTube. I'm finally using the Mercury Retrograde to reorganize my time and I'm like, okay, we're gonna do this. We're gonna come back, um, put these live on my channel, uh, get into the habit of giving you guys this monthly video, giving you insight into how the astrological transits are going to affect each and every one of the 12 signs. Ba -ba. So I'm stoked to be back. Thank you guys for uh, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing. Those of you guys who are members, you are awesome. You're making it possible for me to afford the time and the equipment and all of the things that I need to be able to come back and do more content for my channel. If you haven't already considered uh, becoming a member, please do. It's really helpful, especially if you like these videos. Otherwise, by liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing, you can help me get into the queue on YouTube and bring my content to other people. So I appreciate that as well. Got an awesome community of people who kind of show up in the comments in the live, um, and it's just like the best. So thank you guys so much again. Um, so this is going to be a video that's going to be all about the horoscopes, how it's going to affect each and every one of the 12 signs. So let's get into it. If you stay tuned, not only am I going to talk about how it's going to affect your sign, but we're going to pull a tarot card as well. All right. So transits for February that catch my eye. Um, January 31st and February 1st, we are going to have a new moon at 12 degrees of Aquarius. So Aquarius is the fixed air sign. This is a um, time to really focus on getting down to details, being serious and seriously committing to our future goals because of the conjunction to Saturn. And we're learning to kind of pivot and change things up a little bit because of the squares to Uranus and Taurus. Mars and Venus are going to be um, in close proximity to each other all month. So we're going to start really kind of feeling the passion. If you want more about that new moon, check out the video that I put out this last week. I go in depth into all of the aspects and my interpretation of the Sabian symbols. Um, February 3rd, Mercury goes direct in Capricorn at 24 degrees. Yay! So if you've been waiting to have an important conversation, buy a gadget, sign a lease, move any of these things, uh, Mercury the messenger goes direct and we are out of the Mercury retrograde. However, we will be in the shadow until the better part of um, the end of February, beginning of March, 2022. So just a heads up, we're going to still feel a little bit of the static. And on the 11th, we are going to see that Mercury will come into its third conjunction with Pluto in Capricorn. So something is changing, dying off, transforming. We're cutting to the core of important conversations. We're digging deep into um, what it is that we need to kind of get cracking on. Okay. Check out my time hacks video, um, my volume one astro musings for a little bit more insight into that. And then on February 12th through the 28th, yes, I know that's a very big window of time, but Mars and Venus are going to kiss and conjunct several times in the sign of Capricorn. Um, so on one hand, it's very passionate, um, kind of sexy, steamy. It can be um, really about working towards goals um, and coming together with other people. We're gonna get fired up. Um, it's very sexy energy, so I like that it's happening right around Valentine's Day, kind of really peaking, especially right around the 16th. Um, that's when it appears to be very strong, very sexy day, great time right around Valentine's Day. Um, but yeah, it's going to be happening intermittently through the 12th through the 28th. So you want to take a look at where Capricorn is in your chart. There's just going to be this buildup of passion. And in some ways it can be battle of the sexes because we're going to see Mars and Venus kind of go neck and neck. Um, at some points, Venus will pull ahead at other points, Mars will pull ahead, but Venus is the brighter star. So when we have these transits, ultimately, um, I think Venus is going to be the stronger energy. So love conquers war, love conquers all, it conquers conflict. Sometimes fighting for what we love um, can be something that can kind of come up during this time. Then on February 16th, we've got a full moon in Leo. So very creative, very uh, dreamy. It's in the later degrees of Leo. Um, so that's going to be one to watch. 
And then we have Jupiter in Pisces, sextile Uranus in Taurus, bringing about sudden miraculous changes of fate, miracles, all kinds of things. Um, this transit only happens about every five years or so, and it's going to positively impact all of the 12 signs by providing sudden insights and kind of um, the wheel kind of turning. I think of like the wheel of fortune with Jupiter. Uh, then on the 24th of February, Mercury and Aquarius will come into a square again with Uranus and Taurus. This will be at 11 degrees. So this was actually happening right around the 13th, 14th of January. You want to think back to any kind of friction you had in communication. It was right when uh, Mercury was actually getting ready to turn retrograde. And it represented just kind of this grinding of the gears, right? Grinding of the gears with Mercury and Aquarius, which is talking about everybody, and Uranus and Taurus, which is creating that friction about whether or not it's willing to change. Um, so you want to think back to what was happening right around that time to get some more insight, but definitely that's going to be a day to watch just for more difficult conversations and conflicts with scheduling and having to kind of adapt um, to some new, some new regulations or some kind of uh, new um, stricter uh, rules that are going to be kind of coming in all of our lives. So that's the one warning day that I would kind of put out there. So let's take a look and see how it's going to affect each and every one of the 12 signs. For my predictions, please listen to your rising, your sun, and your moon. Your rising is likely what's going to physically manifest. Your moon is how it affects you emotionally, and your sun does resonate very much. Uh, it can be literal. It can also just be more towards your career or towards your own personal happiness and joy, what you need to hear to get there. I am a tropical Western astrologer, so um, just a heads up, these are Western tropical predictions. I do have a background and um, have really focused on studying evolutionary astrology as well, so you might hear a little bit of that kind of come in. So the month ahead is going to start with Aries. Aries, welcome to February 2022. Um, the month is going to kick off and this is going to be with a new moon that's going to be in Aquarius. Like I said, it's going to be on the 31st of January or on, the Febu on February 1st. Now this new moon is going to be in your 11th house. So it's really um, putting an emphasis on your goals, your desires, your dreams, um, who you're networking with, you know, who you're friends with, and it's a new moon. So new moons are new opportunities, planting a new seed. If you wanna join a group, if you wanna start a group, if you want to uh, focus on growing um, your goals, meeting you know, new people, things like that, this is an awesome time to do that. Um, I think about how Mercury has been going retrograde from your 11th house into your 10th house of career. Thankfully, on February the 3rd, Mercury will go direct. So you may feel like um, you've been breaking up with your career, <laughs> changing something at work, your goals are reorienting reorient um, in regards to what you want to do for a living. That is going to get kind of cleared up a little bit. But once we get to February 11th, when Mercury um, comes into its final conjunction with Pluto, I just want you to be mindful that that is when your frame of mind, your thinking really shifts revolving around um, how you communicate or express what you wanna do for a living. There can be some changes and some conflicts with coworkers, that's possible. Um, there can be some changes of your schedule and you need to kind of adapt and move your schedule around to be able to better give time and energy to your new goals, whatever they may be. Now, um, on the 16th of February, you are going to see that Mars and Venus and Capricorn are going to align, and this will be in your 10th house. So it's interesting because um, you know Mars is your chart ruler, Venus rules your seventh house, it also rules your second. Uh, perhaps maybe partnering with other people becomes a huge theme. You become very passionate about your self-worth and what it is you need to bring home in the bank. So um, really your mind's on your money and your money's on your mind. And I would just say really pay attention to um, self-worth and self-esteem stuff at this time. Super passionate time though. It can be wonderful if you're building and working on a business or you're working on a project and getting ready to launch something. Would still recommend waiting until Venus goes direct. So that's important. Um, but nevertheless, you know, we're all good. Actually, Venus is direct. As I'm filming this, it has not gone direct yet. But it's getting ready to go direct. So maybe waiting until this gets out of the shadow um, closer to the end of the month, beginning of March. Uh, then you're gonna have a 
full moon in Leo, and this is going to be on the 16th of February. Um, it's going to be in your natal fifth house, really highlighting passion, dating, children, romance, anything relating to creativity, um, and just letting your heart sing. So it can be a really awesome time. Leo is a sister sign for you, so it's going to make positive aspects to anything that you have in Aries. And last but not least, we've got um, the Mercury square Uranus that's taking place on February 24th. Now, this is where you want to watch out. There can be some tension. There can be some conflict, something about money and resources and friendships. Borrowing and loaning it should come with a huge warning sign, especially when you're dealing with friends. Um, anything relating to like taking advice about um, finances, investments, anything like that from friendships can be challenging. There can be a sense of you feeling like you and a friend are not on the same uh, page when it comes to your values. There can be some kind of conversation that can come about where you guys are just not on the same page. Um, and uh, yeah, just valuing things differently is kind of the feeling that I'm getting. And um, I would just watch for like taking advice in regards to investments and financial stuff from friends because it seems like that can be a little bit stressful. So let's see what the tarot has to say in terms of um, what you need to be aware of for February. Ooh, how appropriate, the emperor. <laughs> so this is your card, Aries. This is all about Mars. This is all about you. This is about you being on top. This reminds me of Mars going through Capricorn, going through your 10th house, and you are on top. You're focusing on being your own boss, um, being a authority figure in your own life, kind of asserting yourself and really focusing on ruling your kingdom. So this is just reminding you that when the emperor comes up, you are in charge. Bosses, husbands, fathers, these can be things that can kind of come up this month. Um, or just people who are authority figures and like how you're handling and how you're dealing with authority. I'm feeling good about all the planet transits that are in your 10th house, making aspects to the North Node in the second because you're all about getting control and a hold of your own resources. So this is about you taking the initiative and stepping up and making that possible. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to Taurus. So Taurus, welcome to February 2022. Um, I'm excited to see what the month has in store for you. Certainly many changes when it comes to your career and your freedom. The month is going to kick off with a new moon that's happening in Aquarius, and that's going to be either January 31st or February 1st, depending on your time zone. This is taking place in your 10th house, Taurus. It is time finally for you to commit to a new path and think about the future of your career. Remember that Aquarius requires you to work with groups of people, working with others, and also just doing something different than you've done before. So it wants you to kind of shake this up a little bit. So a new moon in your 10th house gives you the opportunity to set goals for the next six months when it comes to your career, your business, and your role out in the world. Do actually set these goals, realize that, it's a little bit kind of in friction with Uranus in your sign and part of you wants that freedom. You really badly want to break free from something. You don't like people telling you what to do. You want to be your own boss maybe. Maybe you want to become an entrepreneur. Maybe you want to launch something. Maybe you're just having a lot of conflict with wanting to be your authentic self and who you have to be out in the world. So if you're married, it's like, I'm committed, but I need freedom. Um, if you are working from somebody else, it's like, okay, I need a job, but I don't want to have to show up to work and be there at a certain time and wear a suit and tie or whatever. You're not, something's not resonating. So just be mindful that even though this is an uncomfortable new moon for you, it's very important that you just stick to the path and focus on freedom and authenticity. That's the best advice that I can give you. Now, on the third of the month, um, we are also going to see that Mercury is going to go direct in your 10th house of career. Now, excuse me, it will go direct in uh, your ninth house and it will move back into your 10th house. So um, this is a sister sign. So it's going direct in your ninth house of your beliefs, travel, higher education, 
Maybe your beliefs revolving around career are changing. Maybe you have had delays in travel. Maybe you've had delays with legal stuff. Maybe you've been having to check in with a mentor or a guru to like really rework what your philosophy is on your career. So now that Mercury is direct on the third, it's going to build up momentum and it's going to come into conjunction with Pluto. Now that conjunction is going to happen on February 11th, okay? And that tells me that there is a profound shift, a change um, revolving around your belief system, revolving around law, um, legality, what you know. It's interesting also because um, you know, Pluto rules your seventh house of relationships. So this can be about a partner who's really kind of pushing you to kind of change your philosophy in regards to um, anything involving business. This can be a really intense time in regards to documents and paperwork revolving around law or legal stuff. Um, it can be a time where you're kind of having to meet a, a deadline when it comes to education or maybe even when it comes to just advertising, changing what you're doing in terms of advertising. Um, then we are going to have on the 16th of the month, Mars and Venus in Capricorn, they will be conjunct. They will be conjunct in your natal ninth house. So this is interesting because it tells me that you may be making plans for travel. You may be making plans also to be going somewhere with someone else, uh, making plans to travel far away later this year. Um, this can also be a time when you're just getting really like revved up about the idea of just bringing in more money and more resources. Mars and Venus can rule you and another person. So I'm wondering, are you partnering with other people? Are you talking to other people about how to make more money and what to do with your money? Regardless, because this is in a sister sign, it's going to be super powerful for you and it's gonna allow you to just really shift your philosophies and your beliefs. Now on the 16th of the month, we're gonna see a full moon that's gonna be in Leo. That's in your fourth house of home and family. So obviously, Taurus, you're getting, you're feeling like you're being pulled at all different angles, right? There's you wanting freedom, your career needing to evolve, and then suddenly out of the blue, there's gonna be some stuff that's gonna come up in this next month relating to your home, your family, perhaps your roots, where you come from. Um, generally though, this is a pretty positive full moon. I'm not too freaked out about it. The only feeling that I'm getting is that you're gonna have to bring your attention back to where you're living. Some of you guys might be moving. Some of you guys might be closing on a house, returning home, visiting family, having somebody move in, having somebody move out. Um, so just be mindful of the, the tension that can kind of be happening in your fourth house and family this month. Now, last but not least, we've got uh, Mercury in Aquarius coming into a square with Uranus in Taurus. This will be on February 24th. There can be some conflicts, okay? It's possible, some tense conversations, um, especially because this particular square is happening between your 10th house and your first house. So you may feel inclined to challenge an authority figure. There can be issues with um, delays with projects at work, changes of schedule at work. It stresses you out, you don't like it. Maybe you're burnt out, you're kind of like, oh, I'm burning the candle at both ends. Now somebody's telling me that they need me to put more out. Somehow there can be some changes also with money and resources because Mercury rules your second house. So when Mercury comes into a square with Uranus on your ascendant, something's not making sense, money's not making sense, there can be conflicts revolving around resources and what you are getting paid. Um, so watch all of the conversations revolving around money and I would say try to be flexible when this comes up, avoid kind of telling your boss off or getting into it with a parent on this day, okay? So let's take a look at what the cards say for you to be aware of in February. Six of Wands, not a bad card actually. Um, this makes me feel like it could be a homecoming. You know, maybe somebody is coming to visit you. Uh, maybe you're going back to your hometown. Maybe this is just about you kind of coming out victorious in spite of some of the clashing energies that come up this month. Um, this is about being well received. So also if you're finally launching a project, finally launching a business, finally giving a presentation, giving a proposal, seeking a um, union in some way professionally, to me it seems like it's gonna go well, you're gonna be well received, um, and that people are really going to be interested in hearing what you have to say. Maybe you're traveling this month or you're planning to travel, that can also come up with this card. So it's saying regardless of the stress, everything's gonna go smoothly and you are actually just going to shine all month long. All right, awesome. 
Uh, so for Gemini and Gemini rising, welcome to February 2022. Um, so the month kicks off with a new moon in the sister sign of Aquarius. Now, this is going to be taking place for you in your ninth house. Your ninth house deals very specifically with far away travels, your beliefs, good luck, connections to gurus, education, publishing, law, legality. So a new moon here is helping restore your faith in the future, right? The future of humanity, the future of your friendships, the future of your goals, they're getting bigger and you're focusing on going out there, going and working internationally or hitting larger audiences in general. Can also put an emphasis on friends that you have from afar. New moons are new opportunities. I really recommend um, really getting serious when it comes to your goals, okay? Saturn is very much included in this new moon and Saturn is the ruler of your traditional eighth house of resources and other people. So to me, it seems like you're working with other people when it comes to making your goals together. Perhaps it's financial goals with a partner. Perhaps it's just goals to be able to better fund education or anything relating to travel. So make sure you set new intentions revolving around that moon. Then on February 3rd, we've got Mercury going direct. Yay, this is your chart ruler. So you get affected by Mercury retrogrades more than most signs. So it's really important to pay attention to when Mercury goes direct. You might kind of just feel this um, stress alleviate and things get a little bit easier to kind of deal with. Now Mercury is going direct in Capricorn, which is in your eighth house. And it's been there for a while with a few other planets. It really shows me that you've been working on some deep-seated intimacy issues, um, really dealing with fear in regards to your worth or fear in regards to paying things off, joint resources, negotiations, maybe talking to your partner more about tax or um, insurance issues. Maybe there's been delays in some of these areas, but it's gonna get cleared up here pretty soon. Now, because Mercury rules both your first and your fourth house, it makes me wonder if you've been having to talk to a partner about paying off a home, a mortgage, um, how you're changing and reevaluating your home or your family status, whether or not your partner wants to get pregnant, any of these things can be kind of going on as a result of this. Then on February 11th, Mercury will come into conjunction with Pluto. So this is going to be um, kind of the final wrapping up of what's been about two months of you really going through the ringer in terms of um, maybe going to therapy, dealing with trauma, talking to your partner about intimacy issues, figuring out how to pay off a credit card bill, um, managing your joint resources with somebody. So now the transformation is finally taking place and it's becoming complete. Now I'm excited because on February 16th, Mars and Venus are going to enter into um, conjunction in your eighth house. Super sexy, can be wonderful for nice um, intimate time together, spending a lot of time with a partner, going deeper, healing, and just like a lot of like opportunities to just have intimacy. Um, secondly, I think that it can also be a time where there is a bonus, there's a payout, there's something given to you. Uh, maybe you get like a really nice gift. Maybe somebody says, um, just here, you know, you've been working really hard. You deserve this. Here you go. Equally, your partner, both romantically or business can see just a real boost in their income, which can also benefit you because it's joint resources. Also on the 16th, we're going to see a full moon in Leo. Um, so this is nice because air fuels fire. Leo for you is going to activate your natal third house of communication. Um, so there may be um, something coming up revolving around talking about children. Leo can be kids. Um, it can be talking about a move, purchasing a car, fixing a car, anything like that. Um, the third house just has you busy too. So it's just like a lot of emails, running around, busy work, having to text people, call people back. Um, and I feel like it's just going to be super active after coming out of that Mercury retrograde. Last but not least, on February 24th, we're going to see Mercury in Aquarius square with Uranus in Taurus. Now, I really want you to pay attention because this is going to highlight your 9th and 12th house. To me, it seems like there may be some sudden unsettling news that can kind of come about that comes out of nowhere. Um, it can also affect travel. If you're planning some kind of travel, it can also affect education. So classes, courses, anything like that, there can be some kind of hangups. Um, when this square happens, it also makes me feel like it's almost going to seem like some kind of news comes out of the ethers. It just comes out of nowhere. You don't see it coming. On the flip side, it can be a really spiritual message that you can get that's just 
not expected. It gi it's given to you by somebody who's either a mentor, a teacher, um, a guru, maybe in a reading. Um, and it, it, it just, it comes out of nowhere and it kind of takes you by surprise. So just watch for that. That's very, um, you know, Uranus square Mercury. I think for you, um, because Mercury is going to represent this sense of you going, I don't know if I believe in this anymore, it can rattle you a little bit. So just give it a couple days for the news to kind of settle in, okay? Let's see what the cards have to say for you. Two of Swords. So it's kind of like, do I believe this? Do I not believe this? Do I go left or do I go right? Feeling stuck at a crossroads, feeling like you don't know how to make a decision, you don't know how to pick, you don't know how to choose. My advice is don't sit here too long. Give yourself increments of two. Two hours, two days. I'm not even gonna say two weeks because you don't get two weeks because two weeks from this is the new moon, so you're gonna have to actually figure it out, sort it out. Um, I feel like this can be about being stressed and having to make decisions that maybe you're just, you don't wanna have to make. Phone calls you don't wanna have to make. Things you don't wanna have to acknowledge. Um, but I would say it's really important to kind of push through the stress and, and have the conversations if they're necessary because it's really important for you to let go of any stress revolving around picking one side or the other. Just commit and stick to it, okay? All right. So let's get to uh, Cancer and Cancer Rising. Welcome to February 2022. Let's see what the horoscope has in store for you. So the month kicks off with um, January 31st or February 1st, depending on your time zone. Um, we are going to have a new moon in Aquarius, and this is going to be in your eighth house of intimacy, secrets, sex, taxes, joint resources, and it's in Aquarius. Um, one thing I think about Cancer is just the square that you're experiencing from this new moon to Uranus. And to me, it seems like there's big changes in regards to your relationships with friends. Some of you guys are feeling like friendships are dying off. Some of you guys are feeling like you've been in some weird, awkward situationships with friends. Maybe you've been sleeping with somebody, but it hasn't been defined. The truth is, is this can't go on any longer. Your heart cannot be on the line any longer. You need to know the truth. It's really important that you're aware of intimacy and issues revolving around your goals when it comes to merging with other people. New moons are new opportunities. This one's conjunct Saturn. It wants you to get serious about how you share your energy with other people. Now, on February 3rd, Mercury is finally going to go direct and it's going to go direct in your relationship sector. There is, there's no, you know, I can't candy coat it. This has been almost like a war zone for you when it comes to your one-on-one -on -one relationships. And a lot of things are either breaking down or they're breaking through. So when Mercury goes direct here, I think it can be positive because you can feel like communication is kind of working better. You're kind of feeling like you're in the flow of at least being on the same page in terms of conversations with people. However, watch for February 11th. This is when Mercury will come into conjunction with Pluto. There can be some very heated ex exchanges with other people and you might kind of see the shadow side of some of your relationships. And there can be some things that can come up that put you in a position of possibly getting your heart broken. So be really careful, really believe people and hear people when they say things, um, really make sure that you're taking off the rose colored glasses. And if you're feeling like somebody is kind of putting a dagger in your heart with their words, it's not something that you can continue to keep doing, okay? So be mindful of that. On the flip side, on the 16th, we're going to see that Mars and Venus are going to align in your seventh house. So. Not all is fair in love and war. Um, sometimes we fight for things we love. Sometimes we're fighting for things and we realize that the feelings aren't mutual. So it's gonna be really important for you to assess that and figure out whether or not you guys are on the same page. For those who are um, coupled, it can bring you guys closer. There can be a lot of passion. For those of you guys who are single, it can definitely be bringing in new relationships and people who are really pursuing you and just a really sexy time. The same day on the 16th, we're gonna have a full moon in Leo, and that will be in your second house, which deals with money, resources, security, and what you're bringing in your self-worth. Wonderful time for handling financial situations. It can be a time where you can bring more money in. It can be a time where you're finally getting a payout, you're getting a settlement, um, you get a raise, but it can also be a time where you have to pay something off. So um, really pay attention because it can be like money in, money out. I think of like the planets going through your sixth house, so you're still working on your budget. Um, and to some extent, it's like you really reflecting on your self-worth and if the numbers in your bank account match 
how you're feeling about yourself personally. Last but not least, on February 24th, we're gonna see that Mercury in Aquarius is gonna come into a square with Uranus and Taurus. So this will be a square from your eighth house where Mercury is to your 11th house where Uranus is. Pay attention because there can be conflicts revolving around money and resources, um, you know, borrowing and lending. Be very careful with this because there can be issues with that. Um, there can be delays and hangups with borrowing. You might be asking somebody to borrow money. There may be conflict with that. Um, I would also say when it comes to sex and friendships, something's not mixing well here, something's kind of hazy, um, and there can be some, some conflict when it comes to communicating um, with a partner about their friends and whether or not they're involved with somebody more than just a friendship um, or some kind of static that you see online that's very startling. Maybe you uncover something and you realize something about your partner because you see it online, okay? So uh, watch for the sparks flying at that time. Let's see what the cards have to say for you for February and the month ahead. Woof, the tower. For Cancer and Cancer Risings, I'm going to keep telling you guys this, okay? If you keep hitting a, a wall with your relationships and you keep pushing it and you're not seeing it for what it really is, there's going to come a point where the tower is literally like something is falling and it's like, oh shit, like, you know, now there's no going back. Things can be said where there's no going back this month. You need to be mindful of that. It can be a very intense energy in terms of you and other people. This is the card that deals with Mars. And so Mars is in your seventh house too. So maybe you're feeling like others are bossy. They're pushing you too hard. They're forcing you to kind of act or behave in a way that where you're not comfortable, especially within the home base. Um, and so the tower is saying, let it fall, right? Let the conflict happen, have the airing out situation. It's important for that. So that way you can rebuild. Okay. Good luck, cancer. All right. So let's move to Leo. So Leo, welcome to February, 2022. Let's see what the month has in store for you. So on January 31st or February 1st, the month starts off with a new moon in Aquarius. So this is in your opposite sign. It's your relationship sector, clean slate with relationships. Certainly there's been a lot kind of going on there with Mercury retrograde. Some of you guys have been deciding whether or not you're gonna break up with somebody. Some of you guys have been hearing people from the past. Some of you guys have been trying to kind of sort out an issue with your relationship with a coworker or somebody that you work with or whether or not you're going to quit a job. So it kind of depends. Obviously, these are very general. A lot of it's going to depend on your own um, personal placements. Um, but if you are in a situation where you have to say to somebody, you know, can we just have a clean slate? Can we just start over? This would be it. By the same token, there can be big changes going on with relationships, so you want to pay attention. Not just romantic, can be friendships too because Aquarius is in the seventh house. So if you want to set new goals for meeting somebody new, getting closer in a relationship, bringing in more friends, bringing in a partnership, this is the new moon that you would like to do this. Now it's in friction with Uranus and Uranus is currently um, hanging out for you in your natal 10th house. So it's almost like some of you guys are just really pushing. You want a status change. You're like, you know what? I don't want to be single. I want to find somebody. I want to get into a relationship. I want to get married. Um, so there's lots of shifts revolving around your relationships changing because you want to move more into a solid future. Um, it can also be relationships are changing with people at work because you want more freedom. So you can, might have to go through schedule changes or actual breakups with your career to be able to launch other things in the spring that's going to be more independent for you. Now on February 3rd, Mercury goes direct in the sign of Capricorn. So that's in your sixth house. So if you've been focusing on clearing out bad habits, cleaning up your diet, being more active, taking better care of your pets, getting your workspace organized, looking for work, changing offices, all of this is going to calm down finally. Yay! So Mercury going direct is going to clear this up. Um, the other thing I would say is that on the 11th of February, we're going to see Mercury come into conjunction with Pluto. So this is an energy to really watch um, because I see this as whether or not things are organized and cleaned up in the home, um, how your emotions are affecting your physical health. Um, maybe there's been some conflict with family. Maybe some of you guys are having issues with just home upkeep in general and there's this realization that it's really hard for you to juggle your work schedule and also your obligations and your responsibilities at home and that can get a little intense especially in terms of communication with some of these people so watch for that 
on February 16th, things get busy, okay? Super busy. So some of you guys might be starting new jobs. Some of you guys might be starting new work routines. Uh, maybe you have a new schedule. Maybe you're just, you know, killing it at the gym. You're just really focused on your diet and your wellness and your fitness. Uh, Mars and Venus are going to go through your sixth house. This can be a time where you are working hard towards your health goals. This can be a time where love can happen in the office. Watch out. Um, and um, just, you know, really feeling like you're getting your life on track and getting things in order and that everything is kind of coming full circle for you. On the 16th of the month also, we're gonna see a full moon in your sign. So it's gonna be somewhere either on your sun, moon, or rising. Wonderful for your energy. It's like you've been working six months to attain some of these goals. Some of you guys might be finally showing off new uh, results in regards to working hard to um, have a better relationship with your body. Some of you guys are gonna uh, you know, display, hey, this is my new haircut, this is my new makeover, um, taking a selfie, all of these things really highlighting you and putting yourself in the spotlight. Pay attention to your body. It can definitely be a little bit more sensitive with a full moon in your sign. And then last but not least, on the 24th of the month, we are going to see Mercury and Aquarius square off with Uranus and Taurus. Now, um, I want you to watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. <laughs> um, the fact that, you know, Mercury's in your seventh, a squaring Uranus, it tells me that a partner uh, may be a little snippy, they may be a little short, they may say some things that are not so friendly in regards to the future of your relationship, your relationship status, um, perhaps even your job or your status in the world. You can have some kind of conflict with a superior or a boss at work, or maybe there's some kind of issue because um, a parent is kind of um, giving you advice about your dating life or your love life, and they may not necessarily vibe with a romantic partner, okay? So watch that. There can be more conflict than usual those uh, around that day, plus or minus a couple days. So let's see what the cards say for you, Leo. Oof, the devil. <laughs> so it's in your sixth house, right? You're so focused on clearing out your bad patterns and your bad habits and your addictions. And whether it's chocolate cake or just dating shitty people or not keeping your office cubicle clean, whatever it is, this is Capricorn. And this is where Mars and Venus, but also Pluto are. So old habits are gonna die hard for you in the next like six to eight weeks. If you just keep going back to that same pattern and that same habit, if you are a stress smoker, if you are an emotional eater, if you are not eating enough, if you're working out too much, if you're working too much, too much is something that I want you guys to look at and whether or not less is more and the devil is representing something that's been holding you back and finally confronting it, right? Confronting it and dealing with it because it's important for you to release it and let it go. So watch for what it has a hold on you this month, okay? All right, so let's get into Leo, excuse me, to Virgo. Mercury retrograde, I'm so over this. I thought seriously, like, do I want to do this during a Mercury retrograde? And I was just like, I'm just going to go against my, 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 uh, my insight, inside knowledge and just do it anyway. So if this even gets put out there, I'll be surprised. <laughs> okay, so uh, Virgo, welcome to February 2022. Um, this is the overview for you this month. Um, the month kicks off with a new moon in Aquarius in your sixth house. So this is all about setting new goals and um, really putting emphasis on um, making more time for friends, adapting and bringing in technology to help you get a job done. Maybe it's gonna be updating software. Maybe this is gonna be just about you getting a gym membership and committing to having a healthier and more balanced lifestyle. So Aquarius in the six is interesting because gadgets, apps, Apple watches, um, anything that tracks your health, your fitness, your uh, screen time can be really helpful for you this month. And I want you guys to think about how you can get things in better order and feel like you have time to do all the things that you want. Some of you guys will have new coworkers. Some of you guys will have new offices. Some of you guys will be taking on new jobs or new responsibilities in general. So it's looking good. On February 3rd, um, we are going to see that your chart ruler, Mercury, is going to go direct in your fifth house. So there's been a lot of back and forth in your love life. Maybe some of you guys have been hearing from romantic partners from the past, back and forth with whether or not you're gonna date somebody, dealing with inner child work, having issues in communicating, expressing yourself, um, having some delays in launching your own business. All of this is fifth house stuff. 
So when Mercury goes direct, it's gonna get clearer. Um, how you express and communicate matters of the heart are gonna become more clear and concise. So that will be helpful. Mercury rules your first and your 10th house. So if you are somebody who is turning a hobby into a hustle, launching a business, anything like that, this is gonna get more clear. I think you're gonna feel more assertive. That's the feeling that I'm getting. Um, and when it conjuncts Pluto, okay, this will be on Mercury, <laughs> this will be on February 11th, Mercury will conjunct Pluto, that's your third house ruler. So it's about a really important conversation. It's gonna cut to the heart of the matter. Maybe it's like having a one-on-one -on -one with somebody and being like, are you in love with me or are you not, okay? Because it involves your third and your fifth house, it can also be um, addressing issues relating to your early childhood, any um, important conversations you need to have with a sibling, um, important phone calls, text messages, things like that. And it's passionate, it's powerful, it's deep, right? And it can also be big decisions you're making about whether or not you wanna have children. That's another um, kind of emphasis that's kind of going on in your fifth house and how you're talking about that when it comes to your dating life. Now on February 16th, we are going to see that uh, Mars and Venus collide in Capricorn. They're gonna be in your fifth house, very romantic, very passionate, pay attention. Some of you guys will be falling in love, some of you guys will say I love you or you'll hear it. Equally, you can fall in love with a hobby, fall in love with a child, somebody younger, um, fall in love with a work project and just feel like you're getting a lot done, you're very self-expressive, it can be a wonderful time for dating and a wonderful time for creativity, okay? On the 16th, also, we're gonna have a full moon in Leo, so that's your 12th house. So that tells me like, total eclipse of the heart, <laughs> bringing up something uh, very magical, very spiritual, um, very kind of behind the scenes. There can be make or break moments going on with your love life. There can be somebody that comes out of the blue unexpectedly. Um, being that Leo in your 12th house is a solar house, I think it's also gonna be kind of highlighting whether or not there is um, love within a friendship or whether or not somebody is done. So it's really important to pay attention to what goes on there. A full moon in your 12th house can have you feel a little wackadoo, okay? You might kind of feel like you're bugging out you need sleep, you need your space, watch out for bad habits and bad patterning. Don't lose your head over a romantic situation. Last but not least, on February 24th, we're gonna see Mercury and Aquarius come into a square with Uranus and Taurus. Now this is a square from your sixth house of daily routine, pets, health, coworkers, to your ninth house, which deals with legality, traveling, education, some of you guys may feel like you need new tools in the type of work that you're doing and that you need new training. Some of you guys are just trying to make more time for traveling, more time for continuing education, more time for exploring the world, more time for exploring your beliefs. Maybe you need more time and assistance also just to get things done. Some of you guys need to actually hire people to help you. So um, there is going to be some friction revolving around work and travel schedules, work and education schedules. Uh, co-workers and your belief systems. So watch for the conflict there because you're Mercury ruled, it's gonna hit you a little bit harder than most people, okay? All right. So let's see what the cards have to say for you for this month. All's well, it ends well. <laughs> Nine of cups, so getting your wish, getting what you want, asking for what you want, having it received, I'm really excited to see that maybe your schedule is shifting in a way that can make more time for travel or relationships. I feel like if you're really focused and fixated on something or some kind of goal, so being that Aquarius does deal with wishes and goals, being that the sixth house is health and wellness, it's like, okay, I wanna be here within six months time. You're gonna get that. I think the goal is happy, you know, happiness, joy, wish fulfillment, um, feeling like everything's coming together. So realize that in order to get that, sometimes there has to be a little bit of a breakdown before there's a breakthrough. This is one of the best cards in the tarot. It's basically the green light, the okay, the thumbs up that you're gonna get everything that you want. So focus hard on your goals and know that they are coming to fruition for you. All right, so now we've got Libra and Libra rising. Welcome to February of 2022. Uh, let's see what the month has in store for you. We've got a new moon in Aquarius. Um, this is in a sister sign. It's taking place in your fifth house, which deals with love, romance, creativity, self-expression, self-employment, also children. So a new moon here. If you are somebody who wants to fall in love, meet somebody, get into a relationship, 
Um, start a new creative venture, start sharing with groups of people, start having more fun with your friends. If you are trying to get pregnant, any of these things are goals that you wanna set for your new moon in the fifth house. So that will be either on January 31st or February 1st this month, depending on where you live. Because it makes positive aspects to your ascendant or your sun or your moon, I highly recommend working with these energies. You guys have so much focus and emphasis in just learning how to be your own best friend, learning how to have fun. Um, and also, you know, pregnancy is a big theme. So a new moon in this fifth house can give that opportunity to come into fruition within about six months time. Now, Mercury is going direct on February 3rd. And so that's wonderful because it's been going retrograde from your fifth house to your fourth. Um, some of you guys have been reconfiguring your homes, reorganizing your homes. Some of you guys have been deciding if you're gonna move, if you're gonna leave, if you're gonna fix something up, pay something off, if you need more room or space in your home. Now this has brought you a lot of anxiety because Mercury rules your 12th house of the hidden realm and also the ninth house of uh, your beliefs and your philosophy. So there's kind of like this back and forth that's like, do I continue with my old family patterning? Do we wanna live here? Or do we wanna move away? So this is gonna kind of get cleared up a little bit. It's gonna get a whole lot easier. And then finally on February 11th, Mercury's gonna come into conjunction with Pluto. Now that's your second house ruler. So some of you guys might get a final answer as to whether or not you pay off a home loan, whether or not you qualify for a loan, whether or not you get an, in an inheritance, um, how much it's gonna cost to fix something at home, anything like that can kind of come up. Family secrets can come up, family secrets can be exposed, and there can be some really intense and heated exchanges with family members in general. So watch for that, especially around mid-month. Now on February the 16th, we're gonna see Mars and Venus collide in the sign of Capricorn in your fourth house. So Venus is your chart ruler, Mars rules your seventh house, it also rules your second. So you and a partner seem to be really adamant and fixated on fixing up a home, fixing up a property, buying a property, spending time at home, having lots of time together in the domestic field. Maybe you're making plans in regards to your home and just doing more there. Maybe you're planning on where you're gonna live down the road. It just kind of depends. Um, it can be very, very, very um, intimate in regards to having nice dinners, um, exchanges, kind of cuddling, spending time together, um, and just having more one-on-one -on -one time with your family or with your partner. You wanna watch out though, because Mars being really close to Venus can definitely kind of rile you up a little bit and it can make you a little bit heated and a little touchy. Um, so just be mindful of that in terms of how you're interacting with people at home this month. Now, um, on the 16th also, we're going to see a full moon in the sign of Leo that is your 11th house ruler. So it's basically going to be all about your goals. Um, you can be spending a lot of time with friends. There could be friends that are visiting you. You can be um, seeing some of your goals finally kind of coming to fruition. It can just be a really wonderful time for just seeing wish fulfillment taking place. And this is something that you've been working on for the better part of six months. Now, friendships are gonna get highlighted big time. Pay attention to that, especially with uh, Mercury that will eventually go back into your fifth house. There can be some big changes going on with friends. And then last but not least, on February 24th, you're gonna see Mercury in Aquarius is gonna come into a square with Uranus and Taurus. This will be a square from Mercury in your fifth house to um, Uranus in your eighth house, Libra. Number one, you have no business gambling or taking chances. Be careful with stock market stuff. Be careful with investments. You may find that there can be some things that just blow up. Equally, you can have some issues in regards to how you're communicating matters of the heart and intimacy with a romantic partner, okay? Mercury being the ruler, like I said, of your 12th and also your um, natal ninth house, Issues in terms of philosophy, I could see like maybe you're talking to a partner about what you need in terms of intimacy and they're just kind of cold. Uh, maybe you're ha trying to strike up conversations with the partner about children or pregnancy and they say something that just throws you off guard and you're like, what? And you realize you guys aren't on the same page. So watch out for those communication issues. Not the best day to be kind of throwing barbs and having conflict with people, okay? Let's see what the cards have in store for you. Queen of Wands, wonderful energy. Um, this can be talking about you just being a little bit more passionate. Sorry, I'm just noticing I did not move it to Libra. <laughs> the whole time I've been talking to Libra, Libra hasn't been there. It's here now, don't worry, Libra. Um, maybe you're noticing that you're just a little bit more passionate. Um, you're a little bit more fixated on um, your creativity, your energy, how you're expressing yourself, what you're creating, 
wonderful time because you've got you know the sun that's going through your fifth house um, I feel like this is just about you feeling yourself and not being pushy, but being somebody who's very confident and has a sense of warmth and all knowing of their worth, right? And so maybe your, your, your confidence is coming back and you're carrying yourself in a very different way. This is also about your creativity, what you're creating, what you're putting your energy into and what you're bringing to life, whether it's projects or actual children. Watch for a fire sign that can come into your life this month. So it can be a woman who is either an Aries or a Leo or a Sag who can aid you in your creative process in some way, okay? Pay attention for that. I'll leave the screen on here just for a second so you can see some of the placements. Sorry, once again, Mercury retrograde. <laughs> um, but that way you can kind of see what's happening for the month ahead. Um, not so much the sun, but obviously most of the other planets are either going to be in the house or um, slowly moving to the next house, like Mercury, Venus, the sun, um, but Mars is gonna be hanging out in your fourth for a little bit. All right, sorry Libra. Ah! All right, so let's get to Scorpio. Scorpio and Scorpio rising. Uh, welcome to your February 2022 horoscope. Um, the month is going to kick off on January 31st or February 1st, depending on your time zone. We've got a new moon in your third house. So this is all going, in your fourth house. We've got a new moon in your fourth house. Um, so this is in Aquarius. It deals with family, home, where you're living. Um, it deals with your roots. Um, if you're looking for a new home, if you're looking to have a clean slate with your family, if you're looking to rearrange your home, clean it, declutter it, any of these things, um, sell your house, or just work on your inner emotions, right? This is the time to do it. Now, Scorpio, I got to tell you, similar to Taurus and Leo, um, now that the nodes are in the fixed signs and we're having eclipses in the fixed signs, you are feeling the pressure as well. So things are going to get a little intense for you this month. Um, on February 3rd, Mercury will go direct and it's going to go direct in your third house of communication. So Mercury rules your 11th and your 8th house. Um, and it's going to go direct in the third. So issues revolving around vehicles, problems with gadgets, issues with computers, phones. Um, if you've been learning something, you're gonna feel like finally it's catching on. If you've been putting more um, content and videos out there, or if you're somebody who's in advertising, you're gonna see more traction. Communication breakdown is gonna get so much easier. I feel like you're gonna be able to communicate with be better with people, especially if you've had issues with neighbors or issues with siblings or immediate family members, that's gonna get cleared up as well. When Mercury comes into conjunction with Pluto, this will be on February 11th. Um, this is a day to watch because this has been going on really for about a month now. It's been kind of showing you where um, your thoughts are really deep and intense and where you can kind of come across a little bit too intensely or you have a sharper tongue than usual. Um, and if you've been stressed regarding your schedule, just feeling like there's been too much going on and so you get short tempered, um, this is going to kind of level off a little bit. But watch on the 11th for an intense exchange that, that can still kind of come up, especially when it's conjunct your chart ruler. Pay attention to um, uh, any issues with your vehicle and also just keep an eye on like what's going on with your relationship with neighbors because there can be some important conversations with neighbors as well. On February 16th, we've got Mars and Venus coming into conjunction in Capricorn in your third house. So that's interesting because you're Mars, you are a Scorpio or a Scorpio rising. Venus rules your seventh house and that is of your partnerships. Venus also rules your 11th house, which is like your hidden kind of zone. So to me, this seems like maybe you sit down and clear the air and you've had a conversation with a partner about what's been kind of going on and anxiety that you've been having and you get really passionate and have a passionate conversation about how you're thinking, how you're feeling. Maybe you start thinking about moving. You start talking about moving. Maybe you start thinking about getting a new car. You're fixated on getting a new car or a new computer or a new gadget. If a car breaks down, if a computer breaks down, these things can happen because of the conjunction to Pluto and it may um, kind of propel you to have to go and make a costly purchase or repair. So just be mindful of that. But maybe it's a great time to just focus on um, walking or writing or journaling so you have an outlet for some of this energy. On February 16th, you have got a full moon in the 10th house and that is in the sign of Leo. So it's your career zone. 
Um, so big things happening with your career, big changes happening. It can be just a, a moment of accomplishment. Maybe you um, quit a job, maybe you open your own business, maybe you get a callback um, because you applied and you sent in your resume. It can also represent themes revolving around parenting um, because it's in the sign of Leo, which is children. Um, it's really great for creative. So if you're in the creative field or if you're putting out something that you've been working hard on, um, this is a time where you're going to see more traction, especially if you have any kind of business on the internet, okay? And then last but not least, on February 24th, we're gonna see Mercury and Aquarius in your fourth house, square Uranus in Taurus in your seventh. So um, there can be family drama. There can be family drama between your family and your partner. There can be kind of some kind of drama in your partner's family life. Um, there can be a bit of like a crisis going on where you have to pivot and you have to put your head together with somebody else in your family or somebody else who you live with. Um, to keep the peace at home, okay? So it's gonna be a little harder to do. You, you have been working on this really for the last month and like kind of realizing that in order to get on a schedule that works for everybody, you have to communicate. You guys have to find a way to make your schedules work with other people in the family. Um, you may have some conflict revolving around you and a partner not being on the same page or being at odds in regards to a home or a living situation. So watch for the conflicts that day, Scorpio. Not a time, not a time to start any conflict, <laughs> okay? <laughs> All right, so let's take a look and let's see what's going on for you in February. Oof, Ten of Swords. You know, Mercury retrograde, it's going back into your fourth house. It's gonna conjunct Saturn, ends of situations. You may have to cut off family members. You may have to kind of bury the hatchet with some people. You may have to put an end to certain emotional patterns. You may have to put an end to um, certain conflict within the home. You may feel like somebody has stabbed you in the back. You may feel like somebody doesn't have your back. You may be taken back because you feel like, oh my gosh, I thought we were family. Like, what? So something like this can happen. It's gonna be painful, it's gonna be a disappointment, but you're, it's gonna be enough for you to go, that's it, no more. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not going back and forth with this situation or with this person. So after this comes healing, but after some kind of disappointment or unfortunately devastation. Sometimes this com card comes up also when there is a loss in the family. I'm not crazy about saying that, but Scorpio, I gotta tell you, you know, just with Saturn going through your fourth and squares to Uranus, Endings don't always have to be about physical endings like death. They can be, but this can be like, you know, somebody decides to move out or somebody decides that, you know, they don't want to buy the house or somebody decides they don't want to talk to you anymore. Um, these can also be little mini deaths as well. Okay. Sending you good vibes, Scorpio. All right. So we've got Sag and Sag rising. Welcome to February, 2022. And let's see what the month has in store for you. The month kicks off with a new moon in Aquarius, and this is either gonna be on January 31st or February 1st, depending on where you live. A new moon in Aquarius in your third house is gonna present you with the opportunity to learn new things, learn new languages, um, learn new places that you'd like to travel, learn new skills, maybe you pick up a new book or you sign up for a workshop or for a course. Um, I think it's also just about planning road trips or just planning more getaways throughout the next six months. And if you've been feeling cooped up, like I'm sure you have been, it's giving you the opportunity to focus on how you can have a little bit of time away here and there. You may also be updating websites, updating anything relating to your business, communicating more with friends and wanting to find updates in your technology in general. New moons are new opportunities, so I highly recommend writing them out, writing out your intentions, really focusing on them. Mantras can be powerful for you during this time and just sticking to them and reminding yourself of your worth and your goals. Now, on February 3rd, Mercury goes direct, yay! And Mercury has been going retrograde from your third house into your second. So you're really working on your self-worth, you're really working on looking at your budget, how you're spending money, where your money's going. Maybe you've been using apps to better track how much you've been spending. Maybe you're just realizing what your self-worth is and that you've been um, undercharging yourself when it comes to <clears throat> services, <clears throat> excuse me, when it comes to services and what you have to offer people. Maybe you're realizing that you have to speak kindly to yourself to kind of improve your self-worth in general. Mm. Um, 
but something is finally aligning and now you're coming up with a plan in a way that you're actually going to use your resources. If you have been feeling strapped for cash, that money has been tighter, that you haven't been able to spend as much, that um, you haven't felt as much coming in or that you've been experiencing delays, this is also going to kind of dissipate as well. Now, um, Mercury goes direct, like I said, on the third and Mercury rules your seventh and your 10th house. So there's some back and forth that you've been having about money and resources maybe with a partner, with a business partner, um, maybe trying to kind of change services, ask for more, getting raises, things like that. It's going to come into conjunction with Pluto on the 11th and that can be a very intense and insightful conversation that you can have. This can end up being a conversation where you become aware of what somebody's been saying or thinking or spending. Maybe this is a time where just all the work that you've been doing behind the scenes is finally starting to come into fruition and you're starting to feel like you're seeing traction and that your hard work is paying off. Now, on the 16th of February, Mars and Venus are going to move into a conjunction. This will be happening in your second house. Great for making money, also great for spending money. So to me, it feels like you gotta put a little bit of money into your business, you gotta put a little bit of money into yourself. Maybe you're treating yourself more and you're having like dinners out, maybe you're buying yourself new cosmetics, maybe you're buying yourself new clothes. You're having to put money into something that's gonna be long lasting. Um, so just be mindful that you might be spending, feeling a little more spend happy or after a period of just feeling stuck and not having as much resources, finally you can breathe and you decide to treat yourself. So that's great. On the 16th also we have a full moon in Leo. So it's gonna be in your sister sign. Um, and that is going to be in the ninth house. So that's all about travel, belief, philosophy, um, having fun. Maybe you splurge a little bit and you decide, you know what, I'm gonna get a new car and I'm gonna start having more road trips. So instead of getting on flights, I'm going to you know, get a new car, or put new wheels on my vehicle, or I'm gonna update my vehicle in some way, um, or I'm gonna buy the tickets, I'm gonna book the, the vacation, whatever. So a full moon in the ninth house can be that. It can also be putting just a lot of emphasis on um, what you're learning. You're learning something in some sense. So maybe you've been reading a book that's very insightful and you have like an aha moment of clarity that kind of comes through on the 16th. Last but not least, on February 24th, we're going to see that there is some friction between Mercury and Aquarius in your third house, squaring with uh, Uranus and Taurus in the sixth. To me, this seems like communication breakdown with coworkers, issues with your schedule, maybe there's a problem happening um, with your car and then you end up having to get it fixed and then you're having to go into work late. Um, there can also be updates and technology at work that's a little glitchy and kind of buggy. If you have pets, there can be issues actually with pets and how that affects your schedule. If they're having a health issue or a health crisis and you have to kind of find ways to work pets better into your schedule so that way you can cope. So stressful kind of going on there. I recommend a lot of breath work around that couple day period because the third house can be kind of stressful with breathing. So if you get stressed out, if you're Schedule becomes too much, I would say. Remember that Uranus wants to liberate you. So communicating what's not working, what needs to change, taking a deep breath, going for a walk can really help you clear your mind and also better communicate and avoid any conflict. Um, there can be stress going on in regards to also your health. So you really just wanna take it easy. Um, take your time, drive slow, eat well, nourish the body, and you should be fine. Let's see what the cards have in store for you for February. The Ace of Swords, like I said, the breath, breathing, communicating, right? Speaking your ideas, bringing them into reality. Um, this is a great card for setting intentions, writing things down, issuing contracts, negotiations, signing things, having important conversations, negotiations, um, and just really being clear with your boundaries. Boundaries are so important for you this month and expressing them and getting the point across and sharing your ideas with other people. Something new is being started. Look for conversations that are initiating new ideas and making moves, okay? Awesome for you, Sag. For Capricorn and Capricorn Rising, welcome to February, 2022. Let's see what the astrology has in store for you this month. You've got a new moon coming in on January 31st or February 1st, depending on your time zone. A new moon in your second house gives you the opportunity to focus on your money, the money you bring in, your resources, and also your self-esteem. 
So um, this is a wonderful time to be doing money manifestation, anything revolving around abundance and just bringing more in. But it's an Aquarius, so it's also about pooling your resources and working with other people. So somehow your friends or other people may factor into the money that you make, okay? Um, one thing that I would say is that if you've been feeling kind of tongue-tied or it's been hard for you to communicate or express yourself, part of this is because Mercury has been retrograde in your sign and Capricorn. Thankfully, on February 3rd, Mercury is going to go direct and it's going to start being a little bit more communicative and um, you'll be able to express yourself a little bit better. You've been under construction, Mercury retrograde, Venus retrograde, a lot's been going on. So you're gonna start to really feel these heavy energies kind of lift and that life is gonna get a little bit easier as the month goes on. Now, Mercury rules your ninth and sixth house. So um, I could see this is like a lot about communication and communicating your schedule and um, issues revolving around um, travel, travel restrictions or just kind of setbacks. Maybe it's your philosophy when it comes to your work schedule or your work life. Now, Mercury is gonna come into conjunction on February 11th with Pluto. And Pluto is the ruler of your 11th house. So it tells me that you're really passionate in terms of sharing your ideas with some of your friends and your goals. Maybe you're talking to people at a far, maybe you're just focusing on getting more done and feeling better organized. There could be a feeling of like um, you starting to look at the bigger picture when it comes to your self-worth and your resources, and you're starting to expand your goals when it comes to what you're doing for a living and your general overall life purpose. Now on February 16th, Mars and Venus are going to align in Capricorn, your sign. You are feeling passionate. You are feeling super eager, active. You're excited. You're working hard on new things. Maybe you're putting a lot of energy into a new business. You're working really hard on your image. You're working out, you're taking better care of yourself and you're just bursting at the seams with this energy. Awesome for you. I think it's gonna be wonderful. I think it's gonna bring a lot of attention to you in the weeks ahead. Also on the 16th, we see Mars, not just Mars and Venus conjunct, but we're gonna see a full moon in Leo. So um, the full moon is going to highlight your natal eighth house. Between Mars and Venus on your ascendant and a full moon in your eighth house, I feel like somebody's getting laid. <laughs> like, it's a lot of sexual energy. It's, magnetic you're bringing people in and a full moon in your eighth house can be very romantic very sexy very intimate it can be um this amazing connection that you have with somebody maybe it's highlighting the fact that your energy is coming back maybe you look different maybe you're carrying yourself different your energy's back so you're just feeling yourself and um you're really feeling the the energies of transformation and you're embracing transformation and you're starting to kind of let the old version of you go. So maybe you're on the other side of the ego uh, death <laughs> that you've been maybe having over the last uh, month or so because you're looking at yourself very differently, but now you're kind of easing into those uh, energies a little bit better. Last but not least, we're also gonna see on the 24th of the month that Uranus in Aquarius is gonna come into a square with um, Mercury in Aquarius, excuse me, Mercury and Aquarius is going to come into a square with Uranus and Taurus. Um, so between the square of your second and your fifth house, this makes me feel like it's almost like you're going to get tested as to whether or not you're really investing in yourself. You don't want to allow your love life or dating to make or break your self-worth. If you have a really sexy time on that full moon and then the 24th comes around and you're like, they didn't call me back. What's going on? Why haven't I heard from them? You don't wanna allow the square between the second and the fifth house to kind of get you down, or I should say, get your goat, <laughs> pun intended. Um, I feel like the second house Mercury square Uranus is how much time or energy you're willing to invest in your creative endeavors. Did you show a creative project to a friend and take it personally because they didn't want to invest in it or they didn't get back to you? Um, do you feel like you're a little strapped still financially and that it's putting a damper on your romantic life? These are things that can happen. So I would just say watch, especially when it comes to your money and your resources. Don't go ham um, spending or gambling at this time. Also don't go ham and spending a bunch of money on a fancy date or gifts or anything like that. Um, just be really kind of mindful and uh, practice moderation with your spending around the end of the month, okay? Let's see what the cards have in store for you, Capricorn. The 
the star card, wonderful card. This is your second house. So it's saying you're healing, you're healing friendships, you're healing your inner child, you're healing self-worth issues, you're moving towards collective group endeavors. Maybe you're wanting to share your creative stuff with friends. Maybe you're just more focused on the creative process in general. Regardless, your dreams, your wishes are coming true. Focus on networking, being around other people, sharing with other people, so that way you're not isolating. Um, really embrace this new you, focus on your goals, and allow yourself to be healed in some of the transformative energies this month. It will be so beneficial for you. All right, so let's look at Aquarius. Aquarius, welcome to your February 2022 uh, horoscope. Let's see what the month has in store for you. And those of you guys who are February Aquariuses, happy birthday, happy solar return. So the month kicks off either on January 31st or February 1st. And there's going to be a new moon that's going to be in your sign. New moon, new you. So it's an opportunity to set goals, new intentions revolving around the year ahead, your personal body, how you look, how you feel. Um, if your birthday is on the 31st, or February 1st or 2nd, it's a new moon birthday. That means you get a clean slate this year. This new moon is conjunct Saturn. It's very important for you to be super dedicated to your goals, your boundaries, and be assertive and committed to your vision, okay? So important over the next six months because universe is gonna test y'all. <laughs> they have been for a little while, but then you're gonna get some more. Um, on February 3rd, this is when you are going to see Mercury will go direct. So Mercury was actually in Aquarius. It dipped into Capricorn in your 12th house where maybe you were in your head a little bit. You had some spiritual epiphanies. You had to check in with your readers. You had to talk to a therapist. You had to sleep more, rest more, dealing with anxiety, planning, working through things, staying up all night, you name it. So Mercury going direct is really awesome because it's gonna leave your 12th house and it's gonna come back into your personal sign. However, because Mercury rules your fifth and your eighth house, um, it's coming into conjunction with Pluto on the 11th, which is gonna highlight this theme of your creativity, your money, your resources, okay? And how that's playing out in your career. Some of you guys who are old enough are also gonna have lots of changes going on with the relationship with your children. Um, and your parenting style towards children, it can be kind of stressful. Some of you guys are thinking about becoming parents, finding out you're pregnant, kind of adopting to this new change in regards to your new status in the world. Um, but whenever Mercury and Pluto come into to conjunction together, there's intense, deep thoughts and we're working through issues with obsession and control. My advice is let it go. You are one of the signs that would really benefit this month from past life regression, therapy, hypnosis, hands-on healing, Reiki, any of these things because it's gonna calm your mind down. It's gonna make you realize you are only in control of yourself. That's all you can control. The world around you might be a little crazy, but I want you to focus more on you and your energies, okay? On the 16th of the month, we are going to see that Mars and Venus are gonna come into conjunction in Capricorn. It's in your 12th house. I see two sides of this. On one hand, you can be having the most awesome bedtime pleasures, sexy time behind closed doors, having sex, watching movies, you know, listening to music um, with a romantic partner, and it's just awesome. On the other hand, there can be a sense of you working too much, um, indulging too much, not sleeping well. It can be about you kind of overworking, burning the candle at both ends. Um, and just being so fixated on what you're building that you're driving yourself a little crazy, okay? You need to also make time for love and int intimacy and relationships as well. On the 16th, also, we're gonna see that there's gonna be a full moon happening in your seventh house, and this will be in Leo. Interesting that there's a full moon in your relationship house. Mars and Venus are in your 12th. There can be a moment where partners are really putting a pressure on you and saying, what are we? What are we doing? Can we define this? I don't wanna be hidden. You know, maybe you've been waiting to share, share with the world the status of your relationship. You've been waiting to introduce people to your friends or your family. You've been waiting to make a decision whether or not you're going to stay with somebody or get divorced. Regardless, big things are happening in your relationship right around the 16th with both of these aspects taking place. Last but not least, we're gonna see that on the 24th of the month, uh, there is gonna be a square between Mercury and Aquarius in your sign in your first house and Uranus and Taurus in your fourth. To me, it seems like there's some stressful conversations you're gonna have with people in your family or people that you live with. 
Uranus being in your um, natal fourth house is like your family's kind of crazy. They're acting up. There's changes. People are moving in and out of your house. You're getting stressed out. Emotionally, you're kind of set off. Mercury is in your sign. It's now in Aquarius and it's going to square. And maybe you say something that rubs a family member the wrong way. Maybe you tell somebody, I'm out of here. I can't be in the house right now. I need a day to myself. I need my own space. Maybe you have it out with a family member. Maybe you share some news about your relationships with a family member that really takes them by surprise. Regardless, watch out for dropping truth bombs this day. Be mindful that you can be a little bit more stressed out and emotional more than usual. Don't make any sudden changes in where you're living or relationships with family. That's the best advice I can give you because if you do, you may regret it, okay? So just give yourself a little bit of time. And let's see what the cards have to say in regards to uh, the month ahead for you. Queen of Swords. So you're an air sign, so this is great. So it's like, you're gonna tell people what's up. You're gonna communicate. Swords are about um, drawing a line in the sand or defending yourself. So I think it's fair to give people the benefit of the doubt and go, here's my boundary, please don't cross it. And then once they do, then you know you can tell people what's up. But this is specifically saying, when it comes to matters of the heart and how you express yourself and how you are actually defending your feelings, because it's a feminine quality, um, that it's really important that you speak your piece, right? And not in an overly emotional way, but just really matter of fact, very direct. People might think you're coming across a little too direct or a little cold, but I would say you have to, you just have to put it out there. You have to say it, you have to own this energy. So really just practice clear communication and really thinking everything through before you communicate. Strong women can come into your life now that can help you when it comes to having important conversations or just being a sounding board and kind of communicating and getting some of these points across before you have important conversations with other people, okay? Last but not least, we've got Pisces. Welcome to February of 2022. Let's see what the astrology has in store for you, Pisces. So um, on January 31st or February 1st, we have got a new moon in Aquarius. It's in your 12th house, which is spiritual. It's gonna have you maybe wanting some time to your space, maybe kind of being in your head because there's something going on with a friend. Maybe you feel in the dark. Uh, maybe you feel like you just need your space and you just want to be left alone. This is a new moon that's all about clearing, sleeping, resting, retreating. This is the energy right before your birthday. So if you are a February Pisces, happy birthday. But shit happens, okay? Shift hits the fan, usually right before your birthday because planets are 12 houses from your sun, so it's clearing things out. So this is not abnormal. Um, if you feel like you need rest, take it. If you feel like you need to check in with a spiritual advisor, some kind of assistant, somebody who can help you make sense of things, if you need to detach and get away from it all, Give yourself that during this new moon. This is about clearing your head, your head space and um, thinking and getting really focused on your goals in general. Now on February 3rd, Mercury is going to go direct and this is going to be in Capricorn. Um, so that's going to go direct in your 11th house of friends, networking, associations, goals. I feel like Pisces have had some issues with friendships. I feel like um, there's some people who have been communicating well or they've been keeping you in the dark or they haven't been very friendly. I feel like you're looking at your friends and you're sorting and you're sifting through friendships and you want people who are going to be goal oriented and responsible and people who are moving and shaking because that's the direction you want to go in. You're more optimistic right now with Jupiter in your sign. So you're kind of feeling like you want more expansion. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I, I feel like when Mercury comes into conjunction with Pluto, this will be on February 11th. Um, this is going to take Mercury, which rules your fourth house of home and your 10th house of career, and it's going to conjunct your ninth house, Lord Pluto. So some of you guys are like, I'm moving. I don't know where I'm going, but I want to go somewhere far away from here. Maybe you're looking at other cities. Maybe you're looking at other countries. So it's very likely that you start realizing and kind of expressing the fact that you're actually willing to start the process of making a move, a far away move going on a trip far away, maybe overseas, maybe going to university, um, and you get really passionate about this and you start realizing how it's going to not just affect your home base, but also your career. So you have to make some changes in regards to that and make it possible for you to balance out these energies so you can make these moves if that's what you decide to do. On the 16th of the month, we're gonna see Mars and Venus come into conjunction in Capricorn in your 11th house. 
So this is wonderful because I feel like there's lots of opportunities to hang out with friends. You might have friends that want to set you up on a blind date or to meet somebody. You may have friends that want to introduce you and get you into a professional network or an organization. Um, just really social, really fun. It, it, Capricorn works really well with your placements. You're going to experience sextiles to where your friends are kind of working for you or working with you and helping you on a goal. And uh, yeah, just you're going to be a little bit more of a socialite this month. Also on the 11th, uh, excuse me, on the 16th, we're going to see that you're going to have a full moon and that is going to be in the sign of Leo in your sixth house. So this is about completing projects. This is about health and wellness, feeling a lot of vitality. Um, some of your health or fitness goals might be coming full circle. Maybe you're realizing where um, your stress and your anxiety or your mental health stuff is actually affecting your physical health. Um, and you're just more aware of things that you need to release and let go of. There can be stuff that can come up with your schedule changing. There can be stuff coming up also with your work shifting in some way and you're feeling more called to do more creative work or to be collaborating or working with younger people. Um, this can manifest as um, moving jobs, you know, changing jobs, changing new locations, working from a new space, so watch for that as well. Last but not least on February 24th, we are going to see that there is going to be a square between Mercury and Aquarius and Uranus and Taurus. This will be a square from your 12th house to your third. Once again, bringing up that friction in regards to communications with friends, feeling like somebody's not communicating well, they're keeping you in the dark, maybe you get a little restless, you wanna send an email, you wanna send a text message. I would say don't, not during this time, or watch for that passive aggressive email that you might get. Um, because that can happen as well. You don't want to respond to that, right? There can also be like clarity that comes in dreams where you're having dreams that's giving you closure, especially if you've been having issues with somebody uh, personally, professionally, or romantically. And that dream may be all that you need to kind of get the closure and just move on. So watch for that because that is very possible as well. Let's see what the cards have to say in regards to February and predictions for the month ahead. You get the Ace of Wands. Wonderful card. It's about taking action, getting moving. I think that full moon in Leo is going to be super active. Maybe if you've been feeling anxious and you need a break, you just focus on burning off some steam, working up a sweat, you know, going and working out or getting creative and throwing yourself into something as like a healthier way of dealing with it. New creativity, new passions are coming up. I feel like this is so amazing with Mars being in your 11th house that it's talking about just being around a lot of other artists and creatives and people who are also equally passionate about seeing huge shifts and really accomplishing their goals. So um, I'm really going to encourage you to go towards what you're passionate about this month and don't be afraid to take initiative and start new creative ventures to just be forward and um, be telling people what you're passionate about and also what you're attracted to because this can be a wonderful card for romantic connections and kind of spending time with people and going out and having fun. All right, guys, hopefully this is helpful for you. I'm... Um, Thankful that you stayed all the way through. I appreciate it so much. Those of you guys who put the timestamps on my videos, you are the best. I appreciate it because I never seem to be able to write those down because I'm too busy doing this. <laughs> um, but I will be back on Sunday doing the uh, weekly astro weather. We're going to do the February 2022 um, address and we're going to talk about all of the most important transits that I'm seeing for February of 2022. We're gonna to touch on some of these, but I have a whole list of other ones as well. If you like this video, if you like new content, give me a thumbs up, let me know, leave a comment. What are you excited for? How is the month affecting you? Uh, once again, if you'd like to book a reading with me, check out my links below. You can find my website at beyondtheveiltarot.com. You can also find all of my social media if you wanna follow me and keep up and see what I'm doing. Otherwise, I will see all of you guys very soon. Enjoy the rest of the month. Take care.